welcome. Today we are going to be learning economics. We are going to be learning what? Economics. 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 You understand? What do you understand by the concept of economics? What do you understand by economics? When you go to the market, hmm, you want to earn a living. You can go to the market and set up a shop, isn't it? And be selling jewelry. Is that not? Jewelry. Why? Because you think that people will need jewelry. Ladies want to wear jewelry, isn't it? During marriages and during ceremonies, people want to look good, so they wear jewelry, is it not? So you go to the market, you open up a shop, and you start doing what? Selling what? Jewelry. So that you can make what? Money. Is it not? You make money. Then the money you make from the jewelry sales, you can use it to cater for your other needs. You can use it to do what? Cater for your other needs. You can use it to pay your house rent. Is it not? You can use it to pay for the shop rent. You can use it to pay for children's school fees. You can use it to do what? Buy food. Can you see that? You work to do what? Earn a living. So the whole cycle of what you're doing is known as economics. The whole cycle of what you're doing is known as what? Economics. Is that clear? So economics has a lot to do with your being able to stay alive. Knowing what people want, studying of the behavior of people. You come to Bobolada, the kind of business that is best suits Bobolada might not be the same that suits town. Is that not clear? You go to the village, what kind of thing are they doing in the village? Farming. Is it not? Farming. That's what they normally do in the village. Now when you come to town, they are doing a sort of other thing to what? Earn a living. The people in the village, are they earning a living? They are earning a living, isn't it? But they are doing a different sort of thing. They are doing farming and some basic things. But we in town, we also earn a living. Is that not clear? Working in construction company, in school and other things. So both of them, both of them are doing what? Earning a living. They are doing things. And those no, things are okay. under what? Economics. Is that clear? Now, but we have a general definition of economics. We have a what? General definition of economics. Hmm? And that definition is the definition by a man known as Professor Leonel Robbins. By a man known as who? Professor Leonel Robbins. And he says that economics is defined as the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. This is the general definition of what economics. And you're supposed to know this definition as an economic student. Is that clear? And Jan is going to ask you which of the following is not a definition of economics? And they will give you different kinds of definition, like buying and selling. Buying and selling is just one aspect of economics. Is that clear? Production of goods and services. One aspect of economics. Is that clear? Marketing. One aspect of economics. Now, when you say economics is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between earth and sky means which have alternative uses. That is a complete definition of what? Economics. This is a what? Complete definition of economics. Is that clear? So, whenever you ask what is economics, this is what you are supposed to define economics as. And you can see the components of this definition. Number one, economics is a what? Science. There are some courses that you call pure science, and there are some that you call social sciences. Is it not? Pure science, uh, give me an example of pure science course. Hmm? Medicine. Or in, in some sort of subjects, give me an example of pure science subjects. Physics, chemistry. 
biology, all those are pure science. You understand? But when you talk about social science, you talk about what? Social science studies the behavior of human beings. You understand? What am I? This guy is expected to like to wear trousers. You understand? It's a science, but he's studying what behavior. I like wearing baggy jeans and trousers and sweater. So let me go as a company and start producing baggy jeans because people in Abuja like wearing baggy jeans. Is that clear? Study of the behavior, science of behavior. So that's what they call economics. So you say economics is defined as a science that studies human behavior. Is that clear? If you don't know what human beings want, you will not know the right thing to produce and make more money. You see, Dangote is the richest man in Africa. He's producing cement. Africa is the developing world. We need yeah, cement to me. build, isn't it? He's producing rice. Everybody yeah, wants to eat food. So you need to study the behavior yeah. of human beings to know what best to produce in order to make more money. Yeah. And when you're making more money and earning a living, you are living in what we call fast economics. Is that clear? So economics is the science that studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means. Ends, your wants, means. Means are the things you use to solve your wants. And these means actually have alternative uses. Is that clear? Those things you use to satisfy wants, they have alternative uses. You can use them for other things. There are some things that you can use as food. You can also use them as drugs. You understand? So you make this decision on, do I use it as a drug or do I consume it as food? So all those decisions, you make them under what? Economics. You make them under what? Economics. Now we're going to look at basic concepts in economics. Basic concepts in economics. There are some terms that you keep using whenever you're studying economics. There are some words, terms that you keep using when you study economics. One of them is wants. One of them is wants. Wants. Wants or want. What is wants? That are working on them, but they are not Something you need, you understand? Yeah, that. That's the basic definition. But there is a difference between want and need, I hope you know. Like food, you need food, isn't it? Without food, you cannot survive. Food is something you need. But you want a car, isn't it? Without car, can you survive? Yes, you can survive. But without food, you cannot survive, isn't it? Not? Yeah. But in economics, all those day. things you need, we call them what? Want. We call them what? Want. We call them what? Want or desire. But in English, we try to differentiate between what you want and what you need. Is it not? Your mother will tell you that you need education. Hmm? Or you want fancy clothes. Is it not? But the basic one that you know that you need is what? Education, but without the education, you find it difficult to survive in later stages in life. Is it not clear? So, want may be defined as insatiable desire or need by human beings to own goods and services. Is that clear? Your desire to own things, that is what? Want. You desire to have a fancy car. You desire to have food. You desire to have shelter. That is what? Want. Is that clear? So right along is the insatiable, insatiable desire or need of human beings to own goods and services. That give satisfaction. That's what want is. Want is the insatiable desire of insatiable desire or need of human beings to own goods and services that give satisfaction. That is what want is. Now we'll talk about scarcity. That's another term. 
scarcity? Scarcity. What is scarcity? When do you say that something is scarce? What's the name? Okay. When do you say that something is scarce? Good. It's not plate. It's not easily seen. You understand? Your friend will come around and say, Hey, Buki, this car is this time around. This car. What does it mean? Maybe they show pay face again. Is it not? That's it. Scars. Scars. Something that you cannot see easily. You cannot come by it easily. Is it not? Basic goods and services are normally... Some goods and services are normally scars. Is it not? Like when you finish university, can you easily get a job? Job is scarce. You understand? So you have to be very competitive for you to be able to get the little one that is available. And that is how wealth is. Money. You can, can you easily go and find money. It's, it has some elements of scarcity in it. You understand? So you see that those groups and all those things that you, you see, there has to be some elements of scarcity. And that makes it economic. Exactly. So, right along. Scarcity is the limited supply of resources. The limited supply of resources which are used for satisfaction of unlimited ones used in the used in the Satisfaction of unlimited wants. Can you see the difference? Your wants are unlimited, but the resources to satisfy them are what? Limited. They have limits. That is scarcity. Scarcity. That is scarcity. When the supply of something is not there, plenty, plenty, you understand? When the supply is not much, we call it, we say that that stuff is scarce. Then number three concept is what we call choice. It's what we call what? choice. Okay, what do you understand by choice? Good. Choice is a what? System of selecting. Selecting or what? Choosing. Selecting or choosing one out of a number of alternatives. One out of a number of alternatives. Choice. In economics, you must make choice. In economics, you must do what? Make choice. Instead of buying a car, and I have house rent to pay, I have food to buy, let me just go and buy a tricycle so that I have a stretching and use it and pay for my house rent. You say that. That is an economic decision. So you must have the ability to do what? Choose. Ability to do what? Choose, and that is called choice. So choice is the system of selecting or choosing one out of a number of words alternative, right? Out of a number of alternative. Now we look at another concept known as opportunity cost. Known as what? Opportunity cost. That's another concept. What is opportunity cost? Expression of cost in terms of foregone alternative. Write it. Is the expression of cost in terms of foregone alternative. That's what opportunity cost is. The expression of cost in terms of foregone Alternative expression of cost in terms of foregone alternative, and I'm going to explain what foregone alternative means. Is that clear? 
Now, Buki, you have 100 Naira. Hmm? And you want to have a watch. This is your list of wants. Watch. You want to buy a sandal. Nice one. Hmm? You want to buy a what again? You want to buy a necklace. Hmm? You have 1,000 Naira. You want to buy all this. And possibly you want to buy uh, a sunglass. Hmm? And the word is 500 Naira. The sandal is, uh, the word is 400. No, the word is 600. The sandal is 400. The necklace is 800. And the sunglasses, 200. Can you see this? How many of these uh, goods or commodities can you buy with 1,000? How many? Two at a time, is it not? So you can pick out two at a time. Is that clear? You cannot buy the whole. So you have to make choice. You have to make what? You have to make what? Do you see how choice comes? Hmm? All these things are classified from the concept that we said so far. All these things are classified as your what? All these things are your what? Wants. Are they not your wants? They are the things you want, is it not? But the means of satisfying these wants is what? The means of satisfying these wants is what? It's scarce. Because if money is not scarce, you will have even one million, you can buy everything you want, is it not? But because it's not enough, it is what scarce. Your wants, the means to satisfy your wants are what scarce. So you have to what? You have to what? Choose. You have to make choice. Hmm? So now, you are choosing the two that can best be bought with 1,000, is it not? So in choosing, you have to have to, what we call scale of preference. What are the things you prefer more? What are the things that you cannot go out with? You need sandals, isn't it? But you can you can say, let me forget about necklace and sunglasses and watch for now. Let me buy sandals because I, once I'm stepping out of my house, I have to wear something in my leg, is it not? So sandal is the number one in your what scale of preference. Is that clear? So after picking Sandal now, you will not pick something else that will match this 1,000. What is that? Maybe a watch. Is it? Is it? Now, this one that you pick and you leave this, the one that is left is known as the word opportunity cost. The one that is left is known as the word opportunity cost. Is that clear? The one that you left is known as the word opportunity cost. And that's why I say it's the expression of the cause in terms of what? For God alternative. The alternative that you've done was for God. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yeah. So the ones you left in order to satisfy the basic need is no. the word opportunity cost. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yeah. Good. Good. Arranging what you want to buy in order of their need, in order of need. So let's put it. Uh, okay, we will explain it later. It's now on the basic concept. But do you understand what scale of preference is now? Scale of preference simply means arranging your wants. You understand in their order of importance. The one that is more important will be up. Is that clear? So now we look at production. What is production? In economics, production is the various economic activities. Production is the various economics activities. Hmm? And at the creation of goods and services. And at the creation of goods and services and the distribution of these to the final consumer and the 
distribution of these to the final consumers. Final what? Consumers for the satisfaction of human wants. For the satisfaction of human wants. That is what production is. The various economic activities which is used in the world production of goods and services. Exactly. That's what production is. Production is not only when you're producing goods. Is that clear? When you're producing maybe uh, Gary, it does not stop there. Production also involves you getting the Gary to the same person that needs it. Is that clear? So it includes the trans transportation, you transport the Gary from the village to where you can, they can buy it. Is that clear? It also includes include the person that brings the Gary to you understand the distinction? Hmm? Production is the various economic activities. Everything in economy is that that comprises of the the activities that is at uh, the creation of what goods and what services. Can you see these two? You know the difference between goods and services. Can you tell me the difference between goods and services? Good. Goods are the tangible products, you can touch them. This is good, is it not? Goods. Shed, my shed, your shed. All those things are good, is it not? But in the house, you get light, electricity. That's the services, you understand? Electricity. You're not saying it, but you're getting it. You're using, and it's useful to you. You want to make call? Are you seeing, are you seeing the, the air time? Are you feeling it? But you use the services, you use their service, is it not? So when you come here, you say, hey, there is no service here, or there is no service. Service is serving you for a purpose, but you cannot feel it physically. Can I explain this way? Like, can I explain my name? Yeah, yeah, explain it. There is a production, like, a production of something, whether it's required for Instead of the big explanation, but yes, you can have your own explanation, exactly. This is just like the composite definition. You understand? But when you now understand it, you cannot put it in your own way. And you can use it. But it's very important that you understand it. The basic things like it must be aimed at towards, it must be an economic activity, aimed at creation of what? Goods and services. And distribution of these goods. After producing it, you have to distribute it so that you get to the final end users, is it not? So that complete process of act is known as what? Production. It's known as what? Production. Yes. Yes, welcome. Today we are going to be learning about economic problems. We are going to be learning about what? Economic problems. And I explain what economics is all about, you understand? Try to study human beings so that you can satisfy their wants with the limited resources that you have. Is it not? That is economics, the science that studies the human behavior. Now, I told us that the means to satisfy the wants are scarce. The means, means means those commodities, those things that you use in satisfying what you need. Exactly. If you need something, you need money to satisfy, is it not? That money is a means to satisfy your wants of buying a necklace or buying a shoe. You understand? But you see that that money is scarce. You cannot easily find money. But, and even it's easy for you to find money, you can buy anything. If you go to your house, you see a car, you see a Lamborghini, you see a Ferrari, you, you have jacuzzi in your, you have everything you want, is it not? But money is scarce, so you cannot have everything you want. So in trying to find the money to satisfy all your wants, you encounter what we call economic problems. You encounter what we call what? economic problems. So economic problems are the problems people meet in the society while attempting to satisfy their numerous wants with the limited resources available. 
Is that clear? So that problem you meet whenever you're trying to solve all your problems. You want to pay your school fees. How can I make money to pay school fees? Hey, let me start selling research card. Let me start selling research card. Oh yeah, is, do I sell research card or do I go and sell shoe? shoe? You understand? Oh, let me start producing Gary. Do I produce Gary or do I produce Apple? You understand? You ask yourself, problem of what to produce in order for you to solve your problem and make money and use it in solving your problem. Is that clear? So economic problems are those problems that you meet in the society. When you are attempting to satisfy your numerous wants with the available world resources. There are three economic problems. In economics, we have what? Three economic problems. There are three of them. Is that clear? And those three are problems of what? Thank you. What to produce. Then number two is what? How to produce. How to produce. How to produce. Mm. Number three is for whom? For whom to what? Produce. So these are the three basic economic problems. These are the what? Three basic economic problems. These are the what? Three basic economic problems. Is that clear? So as an economic student, you know these three problems. What to produce. First of all, you need to know what to produce. To make more money, what do I produce? Do I start producing Gary or Apple or shoe? You understand? If you can't produce what people don't need, will you make enough money? So you have to solve this first problem of what to produce. How to produce? How do I produce the Gary? Now that I've chosen to produce Gary, how do I produce the Gary? Should I use that frying pan or should I use mechanized oven? Which one is easy? Which one will reduce the cost so that I'll make more money? Is that clear? That's answering the problem of how to produce. Now, for whom to produce? For whom? If I'm producing this Gary, do I grind it very well and package it very well so that people in town, people in the city will buy? Or do I do the one that only people in the village will buy? Which one will I make more money producing? Is that clear? If I want to be selling clothes, do I sell clothes for old people or do I sell the, for young people? Which one goes market? Is that clear? That is the problem of what for whom to produce. Can you see the three problems of economics? Once you're able to solve these three problems, you see that you start making a living very well. If you're producing the goods that people want, or you're rendering the kind of services that people want, you see customers will be coming. And once customers are coming, you make more money. Is that clear? Is that clear? So these are the three basic economic uh, problems, and that's the source problem that you encounter with economics. Is that clear? Yes, welcome. Earlier we looked at what economics is, is it not? What did we say economic is? Social science, we studies what? Human behavior. As a relationship between what? Ends. And scarce means which have what? Alternative what? Uses. Is it not? Is that not? That's the definition of what economics. I went on to define the various terms used in economics, like what. What do we say of what is? Things you need. Is it not? Then we say choice. What is, what is choice? All these things have Choice. The act of selecting from different things. Is it not? The act of choosing. Then we learn about scarcity. Scarce. What is scarce? It's not really up there. Then we looked at opportunity cost. What is opportunity cost? Good. The alternative that is left on it. You understand? The alternative that are left unchosen when you're picking from your scale of preference, is it not? So those are the things we looked at, isn't it? Today we are going to look at the economic systems. What are the types of economic systems that we have in the world? In some countries, when you go there, you find out that government is controlling everything. 
you don't need to work like in the socialist Cuba. There's a country called Cuba. You understand? You don't need to own your private business. You work for the government. In the end of the day, the government pays you. Is that clear? But in some economies, like in the USA, you find out that the, the people own most of the business. You understand? They just pay tax to the government. Is that clear? If you come to a, an economy the, like the one we have in Nigeria, the government owns some things, and some things are owned by individuals. Is that not true? Is that not so? Like the NFPC is owned by what? Is it the government or individual? Government. But we have other oil companies that are owned by individuals, like Total Health, isn't it? Good. So your economy can either be mixed economy, capitalism, or what? Socialism. Is that clear? Either mixed economy, capitalism, or socialism. We did something like that in government, isn't it? Good. Lots of new. It's not. So this economy is an economy in which both public and private ownership of where there is what? Both public and private ownership of means of production and distribution exist together in a country. You understand? Like in Nigeria, both the public and the private people, they own the means of production and distribution. Capitalism or free market economy is a type in which the means of production and distribution are owned by private individuals. Is that clear? When you talk about capitalism, it is owned by what? Private individuals. Can you see that? Capitalism owned by what? Private individuals. Socialism, the means, socialism or central planned economy, the means of production and distribution is controlled by the what? State or government. You understand? Or the what? Public sector. Is that clear? So in capitalism, you have private individuals handling the means of production and distribution. In socialism, you have public individuals or the state. Whereas in mixed economy, you have what? Both the what? What do we have in mixed economy? Good, both the private and the public. Is that clear? Can you tell me the difference now if I ask you? So what are the three types of economic system we have? Mixed economy, capitalism, and socialism. So what are the differences? Good. Good. Government. Thank you. Isn't it very simple? Isn't it very simple? It is. So we are going to look at the features of the various kinds of economic system. What are the features of the various kinds of economic system? Features of the economic system. What do you understand by the time features? Characteristics, is it not? Characteristics. So number one, what are the features of what are the features of, well, let's start with capitalism. What are the features of capitalism? What are the kind of things that you see in a country and you say this country is practicing capitalism? What are the things? Number one is that there is private ownership of properties. Number one is what? Private ownership of what? Properties. We see that most properties are owned by private individuals. If you go to America, you see Google owning some property. You see Apple, Facebook, individuals mostly. You understand? Number two, there is what we call existence of competition. There is what? Existence of what? Competition. If you go to America now, you see the tech giants like Google and Facebook, Apple, all of them are competing with between each other. Is there is that also? When you buy phone, you buy techno, you buy Samsung, they are similar. You understand? One is trying to make his own application to be more better. Also, between Samsung and Techno, which one is of more quality? Samsung. Samsung is more quality. But it's costly about that's why plenty of people have techno, isn't it? Isn't it? But both of them have Android applications and they can be used very well, is it not? So there is always competition. Then there is what we call maximization of profit. There is what? Maximization of profit. Who can tell me the two uh, telecommunication giants in Nigeria that are always competing? Global and what? 
global common what? MTN. Airtel, it is a lot, isn't it? They are, com they are competing. All of them also want to make the maximum profit. But you know, if everybody is working for Nigerian government, like those people working in the ministry, is there competition in the ministry? If you go there, they will say, this will not be your work, it will not be government work. Why do they act like saying that you shall be passed? You understand? That's what they say in government work. Nobody is willing to do extra things. Nobody is willing to do extraordinary things. But if you are working for a private firm, you have to be up and doing. If you are not, they will do what? They will sack you. But government, even if your girl wants to sack you, you just look at your girl and say, oh girl, mind yourself, oh, this thing not this thing not your papa work, not the government work. You see people, the people that are working in government office, they will come to work very late. At the time, if they are doing the activity in the village, they will just travel, they will not even take permission. Can you try that in a private institution? If you do it, they will just sack you. Understand? So there is this spirit of competition in private sector, they are trying to improve. You cannot just come there and do anyhow. There is individual satisfaction. Individual what? Satisfaction. Do you know what that means? If you are working for a private, if you, is, if you are running a capitalism system of government, you go and do what you want. Like me, what am I doing? I'm into ICT and education, is it not? I just choose to, that's what I choose, that's what I derive joy. I like teaching. When I teach, I'm happy. And that is why I set up this place. But if government say nobody should go and do anything, but private, that everybody should go and work, they will tell, just throw me into old school to secondary school and say I must go there and teach. Will I be happy? I will not be happy. One, that I will not be making maximum profit. You understand? Because school will be, government will be paying me salary or small amount of money. And some months they will not pay. Is that not what is happening? Salim. Some months, government are owing their, 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 their they, they owe their workers, isn't it? So they are, I will not be making profit, and I will not have satisfaction, I will not be happy. But because I'm doing what we call capitalism, I'm on my own, you understand? I'm a private owner of a business, I'm having what we call maximum profit, and I'm having what individual was satisfaction, is that clear? Free market enterprise, that's another thing. There is what we call free market, and uh, prizes. Now we look at features of socialism. What are the features of socialism? Can you tell me the features of socialism? What are the type of things that you see in an economy and you say that this is a socialism economy? Number one, there is what we call joint Let me drop the answer decision. And Okay, you understand? Socialism is when government is controlling everything. There is what we call state ownership. State ownership of means of production. So it is the state that owns the factories, the corporations. There is what we call non-market economy. Is that clear? Everything is there for you. There is no need going to stress yourself in trying to market your product. Because your produce is also government produce and government gives it to everybody. There is no profit motive. There is what we call what? Non-profit motive. Nobody wants to make profit because you are working for the government. There is promotion of welfare. That's the only that's the only good thing here. Promotion of what? Welfare. Because the government will use that money and the work you've done for it to take care of you. There are features of mixed economy. Features of mixed economy. How do you know a mixed economy when you see one? There is what freedom of thought. You understand? Freedom of choice. You can choose to work for government or work for yourself, isn't it? Or do any kind of thing you want. There is also joint decision. You can have what we call public private 
partnership. There is joint participation of both the government and the private, is it not? Joint participation. You have the government and the private owning the means of production. There is checks and balances. There is what? Checks and what? Balances. Most economy in the world is, are now tending towards this mixed economy. Because the government check and balance what the private sector do. Because if the private sector, if they are producing any kind of thing, if they want to produce tire, they will go and do tire that is of low quality. The government has to be there. The government has to be there. The government has to be there to monitor what the private sector is doing. Don't leave my class while I'm in the class. Once you leave, you continue staying outside. And there is what we call economic freedom. That's the third, the last uh, feature of missed economic, economic freedom. Is that clear? Is that clear? So those are the features. Good. Methods of economic analysis. If you want to say that the economy of Nigeria is good, how do you measure? How do you show somebody that the, men, that the economy of Nigeria is good? You understand? If you are telling us that the economy of America is better than that of Nigeria, or the economy of the United Kingdom is better than that of Ghana, how do you analyze? How do you measure? How do you present it to people so that they will understand? You can do that using what we call basic economic tools. You do that using what we call what? Basic economic tools. So you can analyze, you can do economic analysis to compare the various economy, the kind of market that is moving. You understand? The kind of things that you can produce and leave the other. How do you show people? You do them using what we call basic economic tools. And what are these tools? These tools interpret economic principles in a way that is easy to do what? Understand. They present the data for you, the figures, the fact and figures that make America better than Nigeria. Why would you want to go to America to do business? Why would you want to go to Singapore to buy something instead of buying it in Nigeria? You understand? You use the basic tools to show them. So that when you show, you say, hey, from this thing you've shown me, Singapore is better than uh, China. You understand? What are those tools that you can use in showing? Can you give me an example of one of those tools? Table. You understand? If you put it in a table, you see this country is making this amount of money. Nigeria is making 200,000 in a month from agriculture. America is making 1 million in agriculture. Which country is making more money? America. You understand? You can show it in a, in a table, isn't it? So, what are these basic tools that you can use in showing all this? You can use tables. Table is just one, isn't it? There are many of them. You can use also what? Charts. You can use what? Graphs. You can use what? Mode. You can use media. You can use me. You can use standard deviation and other ones, etc. Is that clear? So now we are going to take the first basic tool of economic analysis, which is known as what? Table. What is a table? A table is a systematic orderly arrangement of information, facts or data, using rules and words, columns, for presentation for easy and what better understanding. It is the most common tool for economic analysis. Is that clear? This is what we call a table. This is the way you draw a table, isn't it? Is that not clear? We can say country. You can say revenue for 2017. Is that clear? Close the door. You say country, then you say revenue for 2017. Is that clear? So example of country, you say Ghana. Two million. Hmm? Nigeria, three million. USA, 10 million, Somali, 
one million. Which country is making the highest revenue? USA. USA. Which country is making the poorest revenue? Ghana. Huh? Ghana. Somalia. Somalia is making only one million. Ghana is making two. You see that? So with this table, you can do what economic. You can do economic analysis. You can analyze this table and say, you can say the country that is making the biggest money. You understand? Then you, from this table, you can say, I want to go and study in America because in America they have plenty money there. That's why we say we call it was basic economic analysis world two. You use them to show what is happening. Have you seen how I've used table, this table to show the country that is making the highest revenue in 2006? Did you see it? Good. So we are going to be showing more. We are going to be showing more. Okay, so now, I'm going to draw a table. The table I, I just drew down is a, is a sketch. So let me draw a perfect table. Table 2.1, right? Table 2.1. This is how you draw a table. You must put the table name. Number of vehicles demanded in a country. This is table number. Number of a number of vehicles demanded in a country. That's the table we have here. Number of vehicles demanded in a country. Is that clear? This is the table number, and this is the title of the table, number of vehicles demanded in a country. So you draw the table. We we'll say that table is made up of rules and words. Rules and words, take your notes. Table is made up of road and what? Rose and what? It's made up of rose and what? Columns. Rose and what? Columns. Is it not? Rose and what? Columns. Can you see it? Prices of the vehicles in Naira. Number of vehicles demanded. So, for the vehicle that cost 50,000 naira, 800 was demanded. For the vehicle that cost 200,000 naira, 500 was demanded. For the one that cost 450,000, 300 was demanded. For the one that cost 800,000, 150 was demanded. For the one that cost 1 million, 50 was demanded. So these are the joints for you. Hmm? These are the joints for you. Yeah, I'm just trying to explain what a table is. You understand? So this is a given table. You say that a table is a systematic arrangement of parts, is it not? It's arranging these parts in rules and columns. Start from this table. Just look at this table. We say that table is a systematic arrangement of facts. You understand? In rules and column. This is column. Eh? Anyone that is vertical is known as column. Whereas the horizontal is known as what? Rules. Hmm? Every table must pass information. So what is the information on this table is passing? Like 
No, no. Number no. one, this table is telling us the number of vehicles that is demanded in a country. You understand? Then when you look at it, you see, for the price of 50,000, 800 was demanded. As the price is increasing, what is happening? The quantity demanded because you know, that's the interpretation of this step. You understand? So if I tell you to interpret this step, you just look at it. After looking at it very well, you tell me that as the prices of the vehicle are increasing, the demand are what increasing. Why? Because if you say now, what are the number of people that are driving Lamborghini or Ferrari in this? Have you ever seen somebody drive Ferrari in Bogadai? No, because the price of Lamborghini or Ferrari is very what? Very high. But Toyota pencil light, you are seeing it always, isn't it? On that TV. On that TV. The, the, the demand is high because their prices are low. But for the one that their prices are very high, their demand is what? Low. You see, you can understand these simple facts, these simple economics. Demand and supply. You understand? Using what? Using what? No, no, no. They are not asking this time. You understand? They will simply ask you, what is uh, a table? You understand? Or they will tell you that the systematic orderly arrangement of information, fast and data, using rows and columns for presentation is known as what? So, okay. You understand? Is that clear? Now we look at another tool. We look at another tool, and that tool is what? Graphs. Look at another tool known as graph. What is a graph? What are graph? This is a diagram showing functional relationship. Uh, yes. Today we are going to look at another basic economic tool. The first basic economic tool that we looked at is the what? Table. Now we are going to look at another tool that we can use in doing economic analysis, and that is what? Graphs. What are graphs? This is a diagram showing functional relationship. Showing what? Functional relationship between two variables. Any diagram that shows functional relationship between what? Two variables. X and what? Y. Is that clear? That is a graph. Information in the table can be translated into graphs for what better understanding. That your table that we have, we can transform it to what graph. Is that clear? Examples of graphs are line graphs, pie graphs, bar charts, pictogram. You've been hearing about bar charts, isn't it? Pictogram, line graph, example of bar chart. You can make a graph from a table. Is that clear? You can only make a graph from a table. Let's take an instance. Can you give me that table I had before? What is the price? Is it not? Yes. Then the other side is what? <laughs> Number of vehicle what? Demanded. Is it not? Yes. Those are the two. Then at price of what? What's the first price? At price of 50,000, we have how many? Um, 800. What's the next price? 200,000. What's the this thing? 500. What's the next price? 450. 450. What's the 300? What's the next price? What's the next? Uh, 150. What's the other one? 1 million. What's the quantity? 50. Can you see this table? You can put this table in form of a graph. How do you put it in form of a graph? I told us that graph is a diagram representing the relationship between two variables, is it not? S and Y. S and Y. So what are those two variables? Price. The X here is price, isn't it? And the Y is what? Number. Number of vehicles, what? Demanded. Demanded. Is that clear? Then we have zero here. Hmm? What are the prices we have? 50 what? 50 what? 50, maybe 100, 200. We have, okay, let's say we have 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 
hmm? 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. Hmm? Then we'll have, what are the numbers we have? We have 50, uh, we have also 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, blah, blah, blah. Hmm? At the price of 50, where can we find 50? Is around here, man? At the price of 50, how many? At the price of 500,000. This is in 100, this is 100,000. You understand? 1,000. So at the price of 50,000, what, what is the number? What is the number? 800 is up here. Hmm? At the price of 200, what is the number? 500, is it not? Hmm? At the price of 450, this is 400, so 450 should be around here, but at the price of 450, how many number do we have? 300. 300. But at the price of 800, this is 800, but what number? 150 should be around here, man. Then at the price of 1 million, what is the number? 50. 50 should be around here, man. Yes, today we are going to be looking at the theory of demand. Theory of demand. Demand and supply is a core aspect of economics. It's a core aspect of what? Economics. Demand and what? Supply. You have to understand how the principle and the forces of demand and supply work for you to do a very good business. If you are selling clothes and you go and bring the kind of clothes that people, people uh, around the area, they don't wear it, they don't demand for it, are you going to make sell? You are not going to make sell. You are going to be wasting your time because you are selling products that are not consumable products that are not demanded for in that very area. Is that clear? You have to sell the ones that people are demanding. In music, they call it popular demand. They call it popular demand. But which music are among the popular demand right now in the country? What song is the most popular demand in Nigeria? No, no, no. There is a song that almost everybody wants to hear now. But there are songs. Which songs? Are you guys done this music? There's one music by Ron, Ron Tam, Mad by You. There's one by uh, Whiskey, Daddy O. Yeah. That's what is in demand. Everybody wants to listen to them. So he's making airtime, airwaves because of the demand. Everybody wants to have your stuff. You understand? If you're registering jam, you see that plenty of people will come around because most people want to register for jam, isn't it? The amount of people registering jam and the amount of people registering NAPTEL, are they the same? You do write NAPTEL. You do write NAPTEL. If you ask in the whole class, you find out that virtually nobody here wrote NAPTEL or is willing to write NAPTEL. But everybody wants to write what? So anybody that is selling jam form and the person that is selling napted form, who will be making more sales? Jam. Why? Because people are doing what? People are doing what? They are demanding for jam. Is that clear? So when you are selling, you make sure that you are selling goods that have high words. Goods that have high words so that you can be selling. Is that clear? Is that clear? So what is demand? We say that demand is the ability and willingness to buy a specific quantity of goods and services at a given price and at a particular period of what? Time. Your ability and what? Willingness. Your ability and what? If you're not able, then it is not demand. I explained it before, but... Like now, you might be willing to have a, a duplex. You're willing to have a Lamborghini. 
you're willing to drive a, Fel a Ferrari. You understand? You wish to have all those things. Is that clear? But once you don't have the money to get them, then you're not making any words for it. You're not making any words demand for it. It can only be called demand when you're willing and what? When you're willing and what? Able. When you're willing and what? Able. And what is able? When you talk about ability, what, what are you talking about? Hmm? Capability. And you're talking about what? The money. 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 You need to have the money. You cannot come to Nigeria. You know, if you come to this bubble and everybody here wish to drive Ferrari. You understand? But because of the price of Ferrari that is very costly, are we willing and able to have a Ferrari? Hmm? But we are not able. So you cannot say that there is no demand for Ferrari in Bogorada, isn't it? It has to be low because we are not able to afford it. But you can talk about high demand of uh, Camry pencil light. You know the the motor they call the car they call Camry pencil light or fish light. You know them. You don't know them. You know it. Camry, Camry. That's what Nigerians buy a lot because they are willing and what they are able. They can afford it. With one million naira, you can get a Camry. Seven fifty, you can get one. Six fifty. You understand? Depending on the on the what's it called? On the model and the what do they call it? How new the car is, you understand? So you can only talk about demand when you are what? Willing and what? Able. Willing and what? Able. To buy at a particular what? Price and at a particular what? Period. Is that clear? And that brings us to what we call the law of demand. Goods that have cheap price. You understand? There is tendency that if you go to market now and you want to buy things and you see the one that is cheaper, it's more likely that you get that cheaper one, isn't it? Because you can easily afford it. The ones that have very high price, do people buy them? Just like I said, Camry. People can afford Camry because of the what? Price. Unlike Ferrari that has very high price. So in essence, you say that the higher the price, the lesser the what? But the higher the price, the lesser the what? Demand. Or the higher the demand, the lesser the what? Price. Or the lesser the price, the higher the what? Demand. It's very clear, but things that have very high cost, you see that the demand are very less. But the ones that have low cost, they have what? Higher demand. Isn't it? That's true, isn't it? So, and that's what the law of demand is saying. It's saying that it states that the higher the price, the lower the quantity of goods that will be what demanded. All things being equal. All things being equal. You know what all things being equal means? But to say KED, all things being what equal. Provided everything is equal, it is always there that the higher the price, the lower the quantity what demanded. Is that clear? Jambu is always going to ask you. The law of the man states one well, of the following. It will give place to statement. So it's your duty to pick up. <coughs> to pick out this uh, statement. Is that clear? Another way that this uh, this uh, statement could be put is the lower what? What will happen? The what? Higher the quantity demanded. It's clever. It's clever. Now we say all things being equal. We say what? All things. all things being equal. What do we mean by that word? All things being equal. The law will hold under the following assumption. This law, the law of demand, will only hold under the following assumption. The law will hold under the following assumptions. You understand? If these things happen, then you know that things are actually equal. 
You understand? So number one of this assumption is that there will be no change in taste and preference of the consumer. Right along. There will be no change in taste and preference of the consumer. So if there is a change in taste or preference of the consumer, the law might not hold the way it should. Then number two assumption is that the consumer's income remains constant. The consumer income remains constant. The consumer's income remains constant. If the consumer's income is remaining constant, then the law will hold. Number three is that no very close substitutes of the commodity exist. That no very close substitutes of the commodity exist. There should be no close substitute of the commodity in question existing. Then number four is that the habits of the consumers remain unchanged. The habits of the consumer remains unchanged. The habits of the consumer remains unchanged. And finally, that there is no change in the quality of the product. That there is no change in the quality of the product. That's the last assumption. So provided all things are in place, then the law of demand, which states that the higher the price, the lower the demand holds. So when we say all things being equal, all things being equal, when we say all things being equal, we actually mean these things. Is that clear? We actually mean that there will be no change in the taste of preference of the customer. The consumer's income remains constant that no very close substitute of the commodity exists, that the habits of the consumer remain unchanged, that there is no change in the quality of the product. So provided all these things remain constant, the law of demand which states that the higher the price, the lower the quantity of goods that will be demanded goes through. Demand schedule and curves. Demand schedule and what? Curves. Demand schedule. What is a demand schedule? A demand schedule is any table. A demand schedule is what? Any table that shows the relationship between the quantity of a particular commodity that a consumer demands at various prices, at various what? Prices. So demand schedule is a table showing the relationship between the prices and the quantity of that commodity demanded. You understand? So any table that you have that shows prices and what quantity, that shows what prices and what quantities, the relationship between the price and quantity is a what demand what schedule and we have two types of this demand schedule we have what we call individual demand schedule and what market demand schedule individual is for one person one consumer is that clear so we say individual demand schedule is a table which shows the different quantities of the commodity which an individual or a consumer would purchase at various what prices at a particular time and we're going to show an example of a demand schedule, individual demand schedule, using the following diagram. Using the what? Using the what? 
following diagram. So whenever you talk about the man's shadow, you're going to have a table like this. It's a table that shows what the what? What does it show? Relationship, isn't it? Between what? Price. Between what? Price. Price per thing in Naira. Price is always in what? Naira. So it shows the relationship between price and what? Quantity demanded. Price and what? Quantity demanded. So number of things per week. Number of things per week. So this table is trying to show us the relationship between the price of one thing and the number that you, de you demand. Let's say the price is 100, the price of one thing, of maybe milk or something. The quantity demanded will be what? 10. If the price is 80, the quantity will, that will be demanded, will it increase or decrease? It will increase because the price is going down. So the price will do, the quantity will increase. And that is the law of demand, isn't it? That as the price is decreasing, the quantity will be doing what? Increasing, isn't it? So let's say now that the price is what? Now 60. The quantity will increase more, back to 30. Let's say the price is now 40. What will do to the quantity? It will increase more to 40. And the price is now as little as 20. What will be the uh, quantity? It will increase to what? 50. Can you see that? So this table we just drew now is known as what? What is the name of this table? The man what? Shadow. This is an individual what? Demand shadow. Individual demand shadow. Is that clear? So draw the table. So I'm sorry, draw it. Draw it as an example. Write example, then draw it. Then we're going to look at market demand shadow. Market demand shadow. Having done individual demand shadow, we are going to look at market demand shadow. This is also known as aggregates. You can also call it aggregates or total. Or total demand. Or you can also call it composite demand schedule. Composite demand schedule. So you can call it any of these. You either call it market demand schedule, aggregate demand schedule, total demand schedule, or composite demand schedule. And it is actually a schedule or a table of all consumers of a commodity in a market, all consumers of a commodity in a market. Unlike the individual demand cell that is talking about the individual demand. It's talking about one consumer, a particular consumer. This one is talking about all the consumers in the market. So it's a table that shows the relationship between price and the quantity demanded of all the consumers of a particular commodity in the market. So when you finish the diagram, I'll draw the diagram for market demand schedule. Market demand schedule. Draw the diagram for my kids. Good. So I can clean up this and draw the diagram for this. So the other one is talking about the first one we drew price and quantity demanded. Just one quantity from one person. But if you are talking about market schedule, 
we're going to have a table like this. We're going to have a table like this. Whereby in the first one, you have what to call price. You always have price, ma'am. Price per team. And the price is always in what? Naira, isn't it? Now you have what we call, you have a line here. And call it quantity demanded. You call it what? Quantity demanded by the following. It's not only one person. So you can have Mr. Obi. The quantity demanded by Mr. Obi, Mr. Ola. Quantity demanded by Mr. Ola. Mr. Musa. The quantity demanded by Mr. Musa. Mrs. Edens. The quantity demanded by Mrs. Wu. Edens. Then you have what to call total quantity purchase per week. Total quantity or chest per week. So that's what we have in in aggregate the mass schedule. Is that clear? So let's say that the price of the good commodity is 100. Mr. Obi will demand for 10. Mr. Ola, 15. Mr. Musa, 30, Mrs. Edit, 20. And when the price is 80, Mr. Obi will demand for 20. You see, it's increasing. Ola, 25. Musa, 40. Edit, 40. And when the price is now what? 60, Mr. Obi will even increase his own more to 30. Ola, 35. Musa, 50. Edex, 60. And when the price goes further down to 20, Mr. Obi will demand for even more, 50. Mr. Ola will demand for 55. Mr. Musa will demand for 70 and Mrs. Edith will demand for 80. You can see that as the price is reducing, their demands are what? Their demands are increasing. Is that clear? In individual demand, we talk about for one person, isn't it? Just price and what? Quantity demanded. But in market demand, we talk about price and quantity demanded by different people. You understand? For that very particular goods. Now, what is the total quantity demanded here? 20 plus 30 is 50, plus 10 is 60, plus 10 is 75. What is the total here? 125. What is the total here? 90, 140, 175. What is the total here? What is the total? 255. Okay, that's by your calculation. But that's how you get the total by adding up the demands, isn't it? So that you can actually have your price against what quantity demanded, just like you had it in the first one. So draw the diagram. Draw the diagram. Let's draw the diagram for the market schedule. This is market demand schedule. Good. Hello. We looked at demand shadow. We looked at what? Yeah. Demand what? Shadow. And we said that demand shadow is what? Demand no, shadow is the table that shows the relationship between the prices and what? Quantity demanded. Is it not? That's what I said. Once I ask you what is demand shadow, just say table first. Is that clear? 
the table that shows the relationship between the prices and what various quantities demanded. Now, demand curve is the word graph. The other one is the word table. But this one is a word graph. Also showing the same thing, showing the relationship between the price and the what quantity demanded of a what commodity. Is that clear? So two of them are showing the relationship between price and what quantity. Only that this one is a graph, whereas the mass schedule is a what? The mass schedule is a what? It's a table. The mass schedule is a what? Table. The man said, do is a what? Table. Whereas the man cup is a what? The man cup is a graph. That's the difference between the two of them. Both of them are showing the relationship between the price and what? Quantity demanded. Now, you derive your demand curve from your demand what? Shadow. You can always plot this graph using the table of the demand what? Curve. So let's say you are given this table. This is the table you are giving. And I told you that every demand schedule has what? Price. In what? Yeah. Naira. For Nigeria, it can be in dollar, you understand? Then after the price, what do we have here? Quantity what? Demanded. So let's say at a price of at a price of 10 naira, the quantity demanded is what? Five. When the price increases to 20, what will do the quantity? Will it increase or decrease? decrease. It will decrease to 4. When the price is 30, the, this thing is what? 3. When it is 40, it is what? When it is 50, it is what? 1. So this is the demand what? This is the demand what? Huh? Demand schedule. The table is the demand schedule. Whereas the graph is the demand what? Curve. Now, you can plot this table to be here. Is that clear? You just draw your vertical and what? Horizontal axis. The vertical axis is the what? Price in Naira. The horizontal axis is the what? Quantity demanded. Now, at the price of 10, what is the quantity? At the price of 10, the quantity is what? 5. Is that clear? So you mark it. At the price of 20, what is the quantity? 4. You mark it, isn't it? At the price of 30, what is the quantity? At the price of 40, what is the quantity? At the price of 50, what is the quantity? You mark all of them. Once you mark, you then draw the word curve. You then draw the word curve. Is that clear? And the, this is for an individual demand schedule. This is for an individual what? Demand schedule. This is how the curve looks. But if you have what to call market schedule, if you have what? Market schedule. You see that the curve will look like this. This one is a straight line. For market schedule, it's not always a straight line. It moves like this. Is that clear? For market schedule, you have something like this. But for an individual schedule, you have this. So quickly write it down. Okay, it's already written down. Yeah, so we're going to look at factors affecting demand. Factors affecting demand. What are the kind of things that will make you to demand for more things? And what are the kind of things that will make you to demand for less? What are the factors that affect the quantity of a good that you can demand at a particular point? Number one is price. You know that if the price of goods is very high, will you demand more? You will demand less. Number two is price of other commodities. If you find out that similar commodities, like do you know you have Ovatin, you have Milo, you have um, Bombita, isn't it? You find out that Milo, they are selling Milo, 1,000 Naira, and it's Milo that you want to buy initially. But you now find out that other similar commodities to Milo, like Ovatin and Bombita, have been sold for 100, 100 Naira. Which one will you buy? You go and buy them. So the demand of Milo will do what? Reduce immediately. 
whether the price of the other commodities will do what? I mean, their demand will do what? Increase because you want to go and buy them. Number three, income of consumer. Income of consumer. If before you are eating massa, massa and small uh, uh, suya, when you are still selling in Gogolada market, and all of a sudden you've got a job in NMPC, will you still be eating massa and small suya? Will you still be eating massa and small suya? Huh? You start eating better food, isn't it? You might start patronizing Mr. Biggs and all those big, big places, isn't it? So what happens? The demand for massa and suya does what? Whereas the demand for uh, season seven food does what? Increases. So your, the, your income, your income determines what you buy. Change in the taste of consumer. Change in the what? Taste of consumer. If before you were okay, you understand, in wearing uh, fairly used products, if you were okay with fairly used products, all of a sudden you find out that your friends, when they wear quality things, you like it. What's going to happen to your buying of fairly used products? The demand for it will do what? Decrease. Find a better taste. Isn't it? The demand for things that are more newer will do what? Increase. Because now you buy new things. Population. Anywhere you go and there are plenty of people, demand for things there, is it high or low? High. That's why Nigeria has more markets than most West African countries. Do you know why? Because the population of Nigeria is bigger than most of them. We're almost 200 million, I hope you know. So you see that people who want to come to Nigeria and do business. All those big, big companies, they want to come to Nigeria because there will be demand for their world goods. There will be demand for their world goods. Period of festival. Ram. Which time does Ram go for uh, Ram? Which time do you see people buying? Idia Kabir, isn't it? Idia Kabir, Idia Madhu. You find out that in those times, plenty of people want to use what? Ram. So the demand for Ram will do what? It will increase. Expectation of change in price. Expectation of change in price. Expectation of what? Change in price. You find out that whenever you hear that the price of petrol is going to increase next week, what will you do? You rush and go and be buying. So that means that the, the demand for petroleum will do what? The demand for petrol products will do what? It will increase. Because you're expecting change in price. Taxation, taxation. If government decides to start taxing every leather shoe imported from Italy, very high, will people be buying it? Once the tax is high, the price of that commodity will increase. So it will make people not want to buy it. Change in fashion, change in fashion. Uh, there's this trending trouser that lady is wearing now. The one that after getting here, it now uh, tightens up and gets to the belly. You know that trouser, what do they call it? Hmm? What do they call it? Okay. <laughs> so that is fashion. You understand? People like to buy more of what is fashionable. People like to buy more of what? What is fashionable? Anything that is fashionable, you see most ladies, they want to wear it because that's what people are wearing. They will tell their mom, they will tell their dad, this is what I want to be in now, this is what, this is what is important. So, you see that the, the demand for fashionable commodities will do what? It's always high, it's always high. Then weather and climate, weather and climate. Raincoat, will it be demanded more in the south or in the north? In the south, isn't it? Because of the what? Weather. There is always rain there. Government policy. If government says that everybody should go to farming, you know, that's what the uh, current government is uh, preaching now, that people should go more to farming. You see that the prices, the demand for tractor, hose, and things you use in farming will do what? It will increase. Advertisement, very important. Anything that is advertised, people want to do what? People want to buy, so the demand is high. 
And that's why most companies they do advert, they run advert on telly, isn't it? Plus G. Isn't it? The fathers are good guys. Yeah, the fathers are good guys. 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 Today we are going to be looking at the distinction between change in quantity demanded and change in demand. Distinction. What's the meaning of distinction? Difference. What's the meaning of distinction? Difference. The difference between change in quantity demanded and change in demand. Is that clear? It's a normal question that comes out. Exactly. You understand? By men looking at it, when they ask, when they tell when they, somebody tells you about change in quantities mandated and change in demand, you will think that both of them are the same thing, isn't it? Change in the quantity of the clothes you're demanding and change in the demand for clothes. Is that clear? The two of them technically in economics they are not the same thing. Is that clear? They are not what the same thing. Change in quantity demanded and change in demand in economics are not the same thing. Is that clear? And we are going to learn the difference between the two. Change in quantity demanded and change in demand. Both of them, you can easily deduce their difference by looking at the graphs. By looking at the words, by looking at, look at the graphs. Look at the graphs so that you see what I'm showing you. You can see the difference between change in quantity demanded and change in demand by looking at their what? By looking at their what? Graphs. This is the graph for change in quantity demanded. This is the graph for what? Change in quantity demanded. Whereas this is the graph for change in demand. This is the graph for what? Change in demand. This is the graph for what? Change in quantity demanded. You must say use that word change. Is that clear? And this is the graph for what? Change in demand. The graph of change in quantity demanded simply shows movement on the curve. Movement on the what? Curve. Can you see? This is the first uh, instance of demand at the price of 10. The demand was what? 40. But when the price increased to 20, the demand reduced to what? 20. Is that clear? So, change in quantity demanded can only be shown by movement. Can you see where it was before? This is where the demand is before, and this is where it is now. Movement on the demand curve. Movement on the what? Demand curve. Whereas change in demand is shown by a shift in the demand curve. It's shown by what? A shift. Can you see the former demand curve? And this is the what? The new one. Can you see it? A shift in the demand curve. Whereas this one is shown by what? Movement on the same demand curve. Is that clear? Is that clear? This one is shown by what? Movement on the demand curve. Whereas this one is shown by a total what? Shift of the demand curve. Is that clear? So that is how you show the difference using the graphs. Once you plot the graph, when you notice the movement in the graph, you can easily say that you are talking about change in quantity demanded or, or what? Change in demand. Is that clear? Then, by way of uh, explanation, change in quantity demanded is the movement from one point to another on the demand curve. That's what I explained, but movement from one point to another on the what? Demand curve. This the cost of change in the quantity demanded is due to due to what? Changes in price of the commodity under consideration. Is that clear? That is the major cause of change in what? Quantity demanded. You understand? Change in quantity demanded is majorly caused by what? Change in price of the very uh, commodity demanded. Is that clear? Whereas change in demand or shift in demand is the shift of the demand curve to another position entirely. Is that clear? The shift of the demand curve is the demand curve. The shifting to another position. It could be it could be increase or what? Decrease in demand. But you know this one could be caused by so many things. Including changing taste of individuals, their level of income and 
there's so many other things. We learned about the factors that affect demand, isn't it? So all of those could be the cause for change in demand. Well, change in the quantity demanded is majorly caused by what? Change in price. Yes, welcome. And if that means you're always going to be asked questions on types of demand. On what? The types of demand. What kind of demand does your shirt have? You understand? What kind of demand does uh, your shoe have? You understand? Types of demand. There are three major types of demand. It could be derived demand, competitive demand, or composite word demand. Hmm? And we're going to explain this kind of demands and give example of commodities that have such demand. Give example of what commodities that have such demand. Number one is what we call derived demand. Derived demand. This occurs as a result of demand for other commodities. The right. You see the word. Can you see? Understand the word. The right. You demand for this commodity because you have to use it with the other one. Is that clear? The right commodity. Anytime you buy bread, it's likely that you buy what. It's likely that you boil what? Butter, because they go together. Hmm? So you can say that butter has a derived demand from what? Bread. Is that clear? Derived demand. What other things can you use together? If you have a car, you will always use fuel, isn't it? Isn't it? You will always use fuel. If you want to take tea, you will always use what? You always use what? Sugar. Isn't it? Mostly. Take tea with sugar. You take bread with what? Butter. You have what? Car with fuel. That means when the demand for bread is increasing, the demand for butter will also be doing what? Increasing. Isn't it? Because butter has a derived demand from bread. The second part is what we call competitive uh -huh. demand. Competitive what? Demand. This occurs when two commodities are fairly close substitute towards each other. They are competing. Who can give me an example of two commodities that compete? Milo and what? Bombita. Isn't it? Two of them are doing the same thing. Can use the two of them for tea? Isn't it? So the both of them have what we call what? Competitive demand. As the demand of this one is increasing, it's likely that that for this one will be doing what? Decreasing. Because people will not be rushing to Milo yeah. and leaving what? Bonvita. Is that clear? What other things have a uh, competitive demand? Dango tea <coughs> products like uh, an elephant bar. That's yeah. Which of their products? Cement. Cement, isn't it? So when that for Dango tea is increasing, it's likely that that for elephant will be doing what? Decreasing. This is all like derived demand. When the demand for this one is increasing, this one has to be what? Increasing as well, isn't it? Now we talk about composite demand. Composite demand. This occurs when a commodity is required to serve two or more purposes. You can give me an example of a commodity that serves two or more purposes. You can give me an example. Example is Gary. Tell me what two yes, things you can use Gary for. And what? It's not the same thing. Oh, let's let the, not Gary as such. Cassava. You can get, give me two things you can use cassava for. You can use it for I Gary, isn't it? Or what? I will. Apple. Isn't it? Yes. Fufu. You can use cassava to make Gary or to make what? Fufu, isn't it? When you process your, your cassava very well, it turns into what? Gary. But when you use it after the uh, basic uh, processing, it will be what? Exactly. So, cassava is going to have what to call what? Composite what? Demand. Exactly. 
Is that clear? So when the demand of this one, Gary, is high, you can see that the supply of fufu will be what? Low. Because they will be using most of the cassava that is in supply to do what? Yes, they don't to do what? Okay. Gary. Because people are demanding more for what? Gary. Exactly. So can you see the difference between the three types of demand? No. The one that has a direct demand is the one that is needed because something else is needed. Exactly. Since you're taking bread, it's likely that you always use what? Butter. So as the demand for bread is increasing, the demand for butter is also what? Increasing. Competitive demand, when you are using this one, you are using it in place of this one. This one is a close substitute of this one. So when the demand for milo is increasing, that's for bombita will be doing what? Decreasing. Composite demand, one product, you can use them for what? Two things, two purposes. Cassava, you can use for gary or what? For food. Exactly. Well, if it's not yes, let's listen up. Stop writing. Elasticity of demand. Elasticity of demand. That's the topic for now. Elasticity of demand. Another word for it is price elasticity of demand. Is that clear? You can call it elasticity of demand or what? Price elasticity of demand. And what does that mean? It simply shows us how the demand of this your shirt will change immediately when the prices of your jet set increases or decreases. Is that clear? If you are buying petrol, your driving car, and all of a sudden you wake up and the price of petrol increases, you know that you need your car to go to work. You will still buy the fuel, isn't it? You will buy it. They are selling petrol 140. You wake up tomorrow, they are not selling petrol 145. You buy 150. You still what buy because you are using it to do what go to work. You are using your car to go to work, isn't it? Uh, kerosene, you want to cook, they increase the price of kerosene. When you say you will not buy and cook again, you will. But when you talk about products like bombita and milo, you know that bombita is a substitute for what? Milo. All of a sudden, you wake up, you go to market, you have money that you want to use in buying bombita, and you now realize that bombita has increased. What will you do? You quickly leave the bombita and do what? Buy milo because you can do without it. There is a substitute, isn't it? Can you say that? The change in price of one of the commodities we mentioned before affected the quantity demanded immediately there is change. Whereas the other one, the change in price did not what affect the quantity, isn't it? Is that clear? The petrol and kerosene we described. The change in price, did it affect the quantity demanded much? Hmm? You still buy your if, if what takes you to town is 20 liter, you still buy your 20 liter, whether the price changed or not, isn't it? But when you go to market for those goods that have substitute, once they are changing their price, what happens? Their quantity demanded will reduce immediately because you go for the other one. Is that clear? And that is what we call what? Elasticity of demand. Price elasticity of demand. And we define it as what? The degree of responsiveness of demand towards little changes in price of the commodity. You understand? How the demand response to what changes in what price and we say that for some commodity demand responds heavily you understand it responds heavily to the changes in price but for some commodity the response is very minimal or even none is that clear as the case of the kerosene and the what kerosene and the what the resin and the word, Milo. Buki, be paying attention. I just say something now when I want to ask you. As in the case of kerosene, as against what, Milo and what, Bombita. Is that clear? Is that clear? So now we look at importance of elasticity of demand. 
Also, elasticity of demand measures the extent to which the quantity of a commodity demanded by a consumer changes as a result of little change in the price of the commodity. That's what I explained before. Now, what are the importance of elasticity of demand? So we can use the knowledge of elasticity of demand to do what? To increase our what? Revenue. You understand? When you know the right product to have. You see that people that are selling petrol, every time they can always sell, isn't it? Because people will always buy. Is that clear? But when you are dealing in business that has a competitive demand, or you understand, that has competitive demand, that have substitute, you have to be very careful how you increase your price. You understand? Because once you increase your price too much, your competitor will do what? Hmm? Your competitor will reduce his own price and, and sell more than you, isn't it? So you have to be careful how you increase your price. Determination of maximum output. The knowledge of elasticity of demand will help you to what? Determine your maximum output at every given time. Determination of cross elasticity. Imposition of tax by government. That clear? Imposition of tax by government. So it's enable government to know the right commodity to impose tax on. Exactly. Uh, these commodities that everybody must use. So if government wants to get maximum tax, what will it do? It will impose tax on that commodity because they know that you must use it. Isn't it? That was the time they used to collect to toll, toll, toll gate fee. Yeah, you guys born then? When you're driving from one state to the other, there's a place where they build where you will pay five five naira or ten naira before you pass. The person just stopped it long time ago. You understand? Now, effects of changes in the determinant. Price elasticity of demand or coefficient of price elasticity is the degree of responsiveness of demand towards little changes in price of goods and services. This is what we explain to be the meaning of what? Elasticity. You understand? So, the changes in price has a lot to do with the changes in uh, the quantity of goods demanded, which we are going to explain in further class. We will be looking at coefficient of price elasticity. Is that clear? Coefficient of price elasticity. Yes, we are going to look at types of elasticity of demand. Types of what? Elasticity of demand. We say that the kind of elasticity, the type of elasticity of demand that fuel or petrol has is not the same that bomb meter has, isn't it? Two of them have different kinds of elasticity of demand. Why? Because if there is a change, little change in price of fuel or, or petrol, you keep buying it, isn't it? But products like Milo or Bonvita that have substitute, when there is change in their price, you see people stopping to buy this or reducing their quantity demanded and going for the substitute, isn't it? So, those classes of demands or elasticity of demand is what we are going to learn today in types of what? Elasticity. Types of elasticity. Number one is elastic demand. We have elastic demand, we have inelastic demand, we have unity elastic demand, and other types, you understand? But first of all, we take the first one, elastic demand. What is elastic demand? Demand is said to be elastic if a small change in price leads to a greater change in quantity of goods demanded. Is that clear? Whenever there is a little change in price, and you see that the quantity of goods demanded changes. You understand? Tremendously. When you have such, we call it what? Elastic demand. So who can tell me an example of goods that have elastic demand? Hmm? What? Rice. Now, from the examples that I have given already, you can pick out the one that has elastic demand. Which one has elastic demand? Why? Elastic demand is whenever there is a small change in price, there is what? Large change in quantity demanded. Once you change price, you will see people will not buy again. You know, any, any commodity that has a substitute, you understand? 
whenever there is a small change in its price, you will see a very large change in the world quantity demanded. If people were demanding 1,000, before all of a sudden they can be demanding only what? One. Because there is substitute. They will leave it and go to the world substitute. So you see that all those, uh, what's it called, competitive demand goods that we gave, like Milo and, and uh, Bombita, most of them have what to call what, elastic demand. Once there is a little change in their price, you understand? People start buying them. And once people now, once there is a little decrease in their price, what will happen? Plenty of people will want to buy more. So that is elastic demand. So we now say that in this elasticity, it is the coefficient of elasticity, E, is always what? Greater than what? One. Greater than or equal to one, but less than what? Infinity. This is the graph. When there is change in price, can you see the change in price? Price moves from BA to what? BB. Just small, because of this small change, there is what? Large change in our what? Large change in demand. There is large change. Can you see that the space between here and here is bigger than the space between here and here, isn't it? So it, this is what we call a fairly elastic demand. You can call it elastic demand or what? Fairly elastic demand. Is that clear? Is that clear? Good. So we're going to look at the second type of elasticity of demand. We're going to look at the what? The second type, known as inelastic demand. Number two. Inelastic demand. And demand is said to be inelastic if a larger larger change in price leads to small or slight change in the quantity of Goods demanded. Exactly. So when you have such, you have inelastic. Here, the elasticity or the coefficient of elasticity. Whatever I say, elasticity. Know that it also means what coefficient of elasticity is less than zero. That is. Elasticity E to greater than zero less than zero but what is greater than zero but less than one. So it's negative. This type of elasticity can also and also what we call fairly inelastic fairly inelastic demand is that clear so it can also be plotted in the graph like the other one that will have b a That will have what? B A and what? B B. I will have Q Q A and Q B. Understand? Whereby here we have the word price, and here we have the word quantity demanded. So when the price moves from B A, given a quantity of Q A. So, EB, given a quantity of what? QB. Yeah. 
So we have these two points. So remember the rule that says that it was completely the of It's not right to pay attention. They will not chlorine. So inelastic demand is when a large change in price. You understand? Causes a very what little or no change in quantity demand. You can give me an example of a good that does that. The price changes very well, but people still they buy them. You know to change. Petrol. You understand? All those products that they are used, that you must buy them. Even if there is large change in price, you see that they change the price of fuel from 87 naira to 140. Still, people are doing what? Because you cannot do without them, isn't it? So those goods that you cannot do without, most of them are have, have what kind of demand? Inelastic demand. Because what? If a, there is a what large change in their price, it leads to only small or slight change in the quantity what demanded. People still demand for it almost the same price, it's almost the same quantity. You understand? The quantity never changes about much. You understand? If they increase, if they continue to increase the price of uh, petrol, and the quantity of petrol you need to get from here to town is 20 liters, you you still be buying 20 liters, isn't it? Even when the price is increasing. So if petrol has what inelastic what demand, is that clear? So that's what we show in this graph. Can you see the change in price? It will move from all the way from here to here. You understand? But the change in quantity is very small. So the graph is always steep. This graph is always what? Steep. Whereas the graph for the other one is what? It's like this. Even. You understand? That's another way Jam asks you the question. The elasticity of demand that has a steep curve is, is it elastic or inelastic? The one that has a steep curve is what? Inelastic. The one that has an even curve is what? Elastic. Elastic has even curve. Uh, inelastic has what? Steep. Steep curve or steep uh, graph. Is that clear? Is that clear? So keep copying. So we are going to look at another type of elasticity, another type of elasticity, the third one known as unity or unitary. Elastic demand. Unitary or unity elastic demand. Demand is said to be what? To be unitary when a change in price leads to an equal change in the quantity of of the goods or commodity demanded. Is that clear? So here there is what equal is equal. Here the coefficient of elasticity is what? Here the coefficient of elasticity is equal to 1. That is, E is equal to what? 1. Is that clear? It could be shown in this graph where we have price and what? Quantity what demanded. So when you have PA and what PB, isn't it? You can also have what QA and what QB, isn't it? This one led to what this one and this one led to this one. You have a you have a curve like that.
here E is equal to 1. Leave what you're writing and pay attention to it. So, in unity or unitary elastic demand, demand is said to be unitary when a change in price leads to what? Equal. Leads to what? Equal change in quantity of goods. It's equal now. You understand? If the price changes by 5 naira, the quantity demanded will reduce by 5. Is that clear? So, when you have such goods, you say that that's, such goods has what we call uh, unitary what? Elasticity. Is that clear? Here yeah, the elasticity is equal to what? One. Equal to what? One. You see the curve. The curve of elastic demand is like this. Isn't it? The curve of inelastic is like this. Steep. Isn't it? Whereas the curve of this one is at the middle. Can you see it? Can you see the difference? Jump is going to draw the curves and ask you what kind of demand elasticity. Send it in here. If this is your curve, hmm? if you have something like this, what does what kind of elasticity? Unity. Unity. If you have something like this, what kind of elasticity? Elastic. Hmm? Elastic. elastic. Then if you have something like this, what kind of elastic? Elastic. Sigma. Elastic. Alpha. Unitary. In what? Elastic. You understand? This one is greater than one. But this one is less than one, zero. Less than zero, but yes. whereas this one is what? One. This one is one itself. But this one is greater than one. Whereas this one is negative. Exactly. So take it down. Are you done? Let's move down. at another type of elasticity, two of them are still remaining, two are still remaining, two are still remaining, two are still remaining, are still remaining. and the two, number four is what we call perfectly elastic demand or uh, another word for it is what infinitely elastic word demand and demand is said to have demand is said to be perfectly elastic if a change in what in price brings about brings about what an infinite infinite effect on the quantity of what goes demanded. Is that clear? So, if you have a, a graph like this, where you have the price PA, because of increasing from this point to PA, the quantity demanded continues to what? Change a lot. <coughs> we call it what? We call it a perfectly elastic what? Demand. 
Also, very similar to that is what we call perfectly in perfectly in elastic words demand or zero elastic demand or another name for it is zero elastic words demand and a demand is said to be a zero or perfectly what? Or zero elastic what? Demand. If a change in price, in price has no what? Effect whatsoever on the quantity of goods. On the quantity of goods, what demanded. Here, the coefficient of elasticity is what equal to zero. Whereas here, the coefficient of elasticity is equal to what is equal to infinity. Understand? Here is equal to infinity. Here is equal to zero. So stop writing. Let me explain. I'll give you time to write. Can you see these two? In this one, it is said to be perfectly inelastic. If a change in price brings about an infinite change in what quantity of goods demanded, there are some substitute goods or competitive demand products that have such. Once there is a big, small, just small change in price, everybody will leave it as, hey, we don't want them again, or we use this one. Nobody will even want to buy at all. There is a change in the quantity demanded because of just a little change in price. You can give me an example of such product. <laughs> Or another person should also give me example of a product that has perfectly elastic, which is when there is a change in price, it doesn't have any effect on the quantity. This one is very simple to give an example. Give me an example of this one. No, no, no. Water. Even if you increase the price of water to one million, will you not still use water? Will you not use water? Does water have any substitute whatsoever? Is there anything that you can use in place of water? So even if the price of water keeps changing, they sell pure water one nine, from 5 naira, 10 naira, 20 naira, any amount, will, you, will, it, will that reduce the amount of water you take? So the change in price of water does not affect whatsoever the number of demand. You understand? You will always use water to do what? Bath. You will use it to do what? Cook. You understand? So those things that are very, very important, they tend to have perfectly inelastic words, demand. Is that clear? So what are those things that once you change their price, nobody will even near there again? Or once you reduce their price, people will leave the other one and go to it. This one could also be seen in, in, uh, in, in uh, it's likely. Cement is likely. If you leave tomato, what will you go to? Take for me those that are those that fall in this class. Is that clear? So this is the curve. This is the graph for this. Once there is change in price, the quantity demand continues to do what? It's too large. It brings about an infinite. It continues. It doesn't stop. Is that clear? Whereas this one does not have any effect on the quantity demand. Yes, we looked at what kind of utility did we look at? Hmm? What kind of utility did we look at first? Marginal. And what is marginal utility? Additional utility, you understand? Now we're going to look at the total utility. Total utility is the amount of satisfaction. The total amount of satisfaction a consumer derives 
from consumption of a what commodity at a particular time. We say that marginal utility is the additional satisfaction derived from consuming additional quantity of a particular good. But total utility is the word total satisfaction, the total amount of satisfaction a consumer derives from the consumption of a commodity at a what particular time. It is calculated using the formula average utility times quantity consumed. Is that clear? Whenever you do average utility times quantity consumed, you get what total utility. And the graph, the graph looks exactly like this. Can you see? That's a parabolic curve. Whereas this is the graph of what? Marginal utility, almost a straight line in this form. This one that use, looks like a parabolic curve is the graph of what? Total utility. Is that clear? Because the total utility you derive from something. The, from first drinking the water, you derive very big amount of utility. Then after some time, it will start was becoming constant. Is that clear? Now we look at average utility. What is average utility? Average utility is the satisfaction which a consumer derives per unit of the commodity consumed. Per unit. What satisfaction do you derive in the one you consume per unit? You understand? Satisfaction per unit, that is what we call average utility. And how is it calculated? By simply saying total utility all over what quantity consumed gives you the average utility. And the graphs look like exactly like this. If you have plot units of utility against quantity consumed, you have a graph like this. It's a curve, but a what? Negative curve. Is that clear? So this is average utility. Average utility. Average what? Utility. Very important. Pay attention. We are going to be learning indifference curves. Indifference what? Curves, very important curve in economics. You understand? Indifferent curves is a or indifferent curve is a curve that shows the possible combination of two commodities, each yielding the same satisfaction or utility to the consumer. Is that clear? Possible combination of two commodities, each yielding the same what satisfaction or what utility to the consumer. I told us that henceforth, whenever you hear the word utility, it simply means the same thing as what? Satisfaction. Utility simply means satisfaction. It's a simple way of uh, explaining satisfaction in economics, you understand? So, any curve that shows the possible relate, uh, combination of two commodities, X and Y, can you see them? X and Y. When you combine the two, giving you the same amount of what? Utility or what? Satisfaction is the what in the friend curve and this is how the curve is normally shown is that clear in the friend curve x it will have x it will have y you understand combination of x and what y to give you these curves is that clear so whenever you have a curve like this showing the two commodities with this such slope you understand it indicates what in the first curve it indicates what in the first curve Diminishing marginal utility and the law of demand. Diminishing marginal, marginal utility and the what? Law of demand. I told you that the marginal utility, the extra utility that you derive from drinking extra water, after you must have drank full cup of water when you are testing, the extra satisfaction you derive is lesser than the one you derive when you drank, when you just took the, the initial cup of water when you are very thirsty, isn't it? So the more water you take, the lesser the satisfaction is giving you, isn't it? But that bulk one, the first initial one you took, when you were very thirsty, you drive very large amount of satisfaction. But as the quantity you take, consume increases, what? You, the, the satisfaction continues to what? Decrease, is that clear? The law of diminishing marginal utility states that the satisfaction derived from consuming successive units, that's additional units of a commodity, we do what? Diminish. Diminish simply means to do what? Reduce, decrease. As the total consumption of the commodity does what? Increases. So when you continue to consume more water, the satisfaction it is giving you will continue to do what? Reduce. The same thing, when you continue to consume more cups of milk, the satisfaction will be doing what? Diminishing. 
Can you see it? This is the diminishing returns curve, utility curve, diminishing utility curve. As the number of milk consumed is increasing from one to six. Is that clear? As the number of milk consumed consume is increasing from one to six. The what? The marginal utility is what? Decreasing from 10 to what? Two. Is that clear? Is that clear? So therefore, you can say that the total utility increases as more of more commodity is consumed, but it increases at a what? Diminishing rate. It diminishes. Is that clear? Is that clear? Good. We are going to look at consumer equilibrium, consumer what? Equilibrium and consumer surplus and its what? Application. How do you apply consumer surplus? What is consumer surplus? What is consumer equilibrium? You understand? How do you explain the concept of consumer equilibrium? Consumer equilibrium is what happens or what occurs when there is a balance between quantity demanded and supplied. Is that clear? It represents a situation where there is no tendency to do what? Change. You need one pack of milk. You understand? Whenever you go to buy, you can always get one pack of milk. You understand? What you need, what you demand for, what you need and you have money to buy, that is demand, isn't it? What you demand for, is what you can be what get is what can be gotten by you or what you can get you understand that's when we say there's there's what we call consumer what equilibrium anything you demand in the, in the market you can do what you can get them you can get it supplied is that clear whenever what you can be what can be demanded by you can also be supplied to you then you have what we call what consumer what equilibrium if you're getting what you want can, will you change there will be no need for what change. You understand? Because the amount of quantity of a particular commodity you want, and you have the money to pay, you demand for it, you can get it, or you can have it what supply. So in that situation, we have what we call what consumer equilibrium. Whenever the amount of a given commodity demanded can be supplied, we have what we call what consumer what equilibrium. Now the second concept, consumer surplus and how it can be applied. This is the difference. Consumer surplus is the difference between the amount of consumer, the amount a consumer budgeted to pay for a particular commodity based on the expected level of what? Satisfaction. And the actual amount he paid to have that what? Commodity. Is that clear? Let's say you budget to pay for a commodity 100 naira. You budget to buy milk 100 naira and all of a sudden you now went and you paid only you bought it how much 18 naira what would be the consumer surplus 20 you understand the difference between this one the difference consumer surplus is what difference between the amount the consumer budgeted which is 100 naira and what the amount he actually paid for which is 80 so the difference between 100 and 80 is what 20 naira so this 20 is the word consumer surplus, is that clear? And this is the graph that shows the consumer surplus. We have the price against what units consumed. This upper part is known as the word consumer surplus, whereas this lower part is the word total expenditure. Once this is the market price, once you buy, every other thing up is the word consumer word surplus, is that clear? So this line shows you the consumer budget line. The budget is made. Is that clear? And this single straight line shows you the word market price. I hope that is clear. Yes, we are going to be looking at the theory of supply. The theory of what? Supply. Previously, we learned about demand, isn't it? I will say that demand is what? The ability and willingness. Isn't it? The ability and willingness to demand for or to uh, ability and what? Yeah, yeah, yes, that is what demand is. You understand? You have to be what? Able and willing, isn't it? 
if you want something but you don't have the money to have it, is that demand? That is not demand. For you to make a demand, you have to be able and what willing to have something, isn't it? At a particular point in time and at a particular what price. That is the demand. But here we talk about supply. What is supply? Supply is the quantity of a commodity which a producer is willing and what able to offer. Not the one that is willing to offer, but the one that is willing and what able to offer for sale at a particular price and at a particular what period of time. That is what supply is. Exactly. Demand is the one that you're willing and able to what to buy to have for yourself. Whereas supply is the one, the quantity of the what commodity which a producer is willing and what able to offer for sale at a particular what price and at a particular period of time. That is what supply. Supply is the quantity of a commodity which a producer is willing and able to offer for sale at a particular price and at a particular what period of time. That is what supply is. You understand? Say a producer of t-shirts like this one I'm wearing, a producer of it, you understand? Is willing to bring 1,000 pieces for sale in the market. He's willing to bring 1,000 pieces. Is he making a supply of, of 1,000 pieces? Is he making a supply when he's willing? He's just willing to bring 1,000 pieces. He's not. But when he's willing and he's also what? Able. That means he already has it. He's ready to bring 1,000 pieces to the market so that people can come and buy. Then he's doing what? He's making what to call supply of what? 1,000 pieces of this jet. So supply does not end at willing or wanting to supply, but it also includes wanting and what being what able, being able to bring it to the market. So when you talk about supply of petroleum products, we are talking about the amount of petroleum products that the petroleum product suppliers are willing to bring to the market. The ones that are already in the market that are now waiting for people to come and do what buy. That is what supply. Exactly. You cannot say that you have adequate supply of electricity when you don't have electricity for people to buy. You need to have it first, you understand? So that people who are willing to buy, who are willing to make demand, once they bring their money, you give it to them. That's when you can say that you can be able to do what? Make supply of, or make adequate supply of electricity. Is that clear? And supply is governed by a law, known as the law of supply. It's governed by a law, known as the word the law of supply. And this law of supply simply states that all things being equal, the higher the price, the higher the quantity of a commodity that will be worth supply. The higher the price, the higher the quantity of a commodity that will be worth supply. That's what the law of supply says. Is that clear? Now, how do you explain this law? If I am a producer and I'm producing this shirt, and I have another shirt, like the one you're wearing, I'm also producing and supplying this, this too, you understand? If I'm making more money, or the price on this shirt is 2000 whereas the price on your whole shirt is 100 naira, which one will I be willing to supply more? The one that costs 2000 because I want to make more money, isn't it? So that's why the law says that the higher the price, the higher the quantity of a commodity that will be worth supplied. Producers want to supply the quantity that they make more money in, isn't it? The money that have the, that you can pay the highest price to get. That's what they are willing to do or supply. Is that clear? And that is why the law says that all things being equal, the higher the price, the higher the quantity of a commodity worth that will be supplied. Is that clear? Producers always want to supply. They always supply more of the products that have that they, they, that have the higher worth price. Another way you can state this law is by saying that the lower the price, the lower the quantity of the commodity that will be worth supply. Is that clear? If, 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 this, if, this shirt is cost, if this shirt costs very low price, I will not be willing to bring more quantity. I will bring in less quantity for people to buy if I'm the producer of the shirt. Is that clear? And this law is often regarded as the second law of what demand and supply. You know that demand and supply go hand in hand. The first law, which one is the first law of demand and supply? The law of demand. Which states that 
The higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. Is that is that so? Or the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. That's the first law of demand and supply. Whereas the second law of demand and supply is the law of supply, which states that all things being equal, the higher the price, the higher the quantity of the commodity that will be supplied. Is that clear? Is that clear? This whole thing are they clear? First of all, say that supply is the word quantity of a commodity which a producer is willing and what able to offer for sale at a particular price and at a particular period of time. Is that clear? Thank you. Yes, just like we have demand schedule in economics, we have demand schedule, isn't it? I will say that demand schedule is the it is a table that shows the relationship between quantity demanded and what price. Quantity of a commodity demanded and price. Any table that shows such relationship, call it what demand schedule. In the same way, we have what we call command uh, supply or schedule, supply schedule. What is supply schedule? Supply schedule is also a table that shows the relationship between what price and quantity of a commodity supplied. Is that clear? Any table that shows this relationship between price and what quantity supplied is known as what supply schedule. I will say that as price increases. The commodity supply, the quantity of this commodity supply, quantity does what increases too, isn't it? Unlike in demand, when where the price increases as the quantity increases, but in supply, as the price increases, the quantity supply does what increases. So supply schedule is the table. Any table, can you see this table? This is a supply schedule schedule table. From this table, you can see that as the price decreases from 120 to 40, the quantity of bags of flour supply does what? Decrease too, isn't it? And that is the law of supply. The law of supply says the lower the price, the lower the quantity of supply. Is that clear? So any table like this, showing you the relationship between the price of a particular commodity, in this case, a flour, bag of flour and the quantity supply is known as what supply schedule any table showing you the relationship between price and quantity supply is known as what supply schedule is that clear is that clear we have two types of supply schedule we have what to call individual supply schedule and market supply schedule is that clear this diagram is a diagram of individual supply schedule whereas this one is a diagram of what market supply schedule. Can you see the difference? Individual supply schedule is telling you about the supply of one for one person. In this case, the name of the person is not written. You understand? But let's say Mr. Obi. You understand? He's a supplier. Or here, Abu. Abu is, a, is the name of the person that supplies this floor. Abu can supply 60 bags of flour at the price of what? 120 naira. You can supply 50 bags at the price of what? 100. This is a, a supply schedule for Mr. Abu. But here you have uh, how many people? Mr. Toby, Mr. Edith, Mr. Musa. All of them supplying at different what? Prices. At this price, Mr. Toby can supply 60 bags at the price of 120. But at that same price of 120, Mr. Ede can only can supply what 90. At that same price of 120, Mr. Musa can supply what 80. So what is the total supply in the market? 220 at the price of what 120. When the price reduces to 100, Mr. Toby can supply 50. Mr. Ede 80. Mr. Musa 60. Giving a total supply of what 190 at the price of what 100. So this table is showing us the supply schedule for the supply ability of how many people? Three people. And that's why we call it the what? Market supply schedule. It's not for one person. The one for one person, Mr. Abu, is known as what? Individual supply schedule. Is that clear? So what is individual supply schedule? Individual supply schedule shows different quantities of a commodity. Different quantities of a commodity which a producer offers for sale at a particular period of time at various prices. Which a producer, who is the producer for this individual schedule? Mr. Abu. You understand? 
So this schedule is doing all the different quantities that you can supply at various prices at a particular one time for an individual producer, who, which is Mr. Wu Afu. Whereas market supply schedule is a schedule of all producers. All producers, these are all the producers, Mr. Toby, Mr. Edet, and Mr. Musa, are all suppliers of a commodity in the world market. Which commodity are they supplying? Bag of what? Flour at these various prices. You understand? So this one is talking about many suppliers, whereas this part is talking about what? One supply. So that's why we call this one that talks about one supply, individual supply schedule. And the one that talks about many suppliers will call it what market supply schedule. Is that clear? So we also we said already that supply is what supply schedule is your what a table. A table that shows the relationship between what quantity and what price. Is that clear? When it is for one person, we call it individual supply schedule. But when this table is for more than one person, Toby, Edit, Musa, we call it what market supply schedule. Is that clear? Yes, we look at supply curve, just like we have demand curve. We also have this supply curve. I would say that the supply curve is a graph, a what graph that shows the relationship between price and what quantity of a commodity supplied. Is that clear? When we learn about demand curve, we say that demand curve is also a graph that shows the relationship between the quantity demanded and what price. But this time around, we're talking about quantity supplied and what price. That is what supply curve is all about. A graph that shows, can you see this graph? This is a graph that shows the relationship between price and what quantity supply. You understand? That shows us that at the price of 20, the quantity supply is only, only 10. At the price of 40, the price quantity supply increased toward 20. At the price of 60, the quantity supply increased toward 30. So it's simply showing us that as the price increases, the quantity supply does what? Increases. Unlike the demand uh, curve, the de uh, demand curve that is like this, which is negative. Supply curve is what? Like this. Because as the price increases, the what? Quantity increases. But for demand, as the price increases, the quantity supply does what? The quantity demanded does what? Decreases. Is that clear? So supply curve is a graph showing the relationship between what?